Blessed be the name of the Lord. Today, we want to take this part of the scripture to speak, to speak under the title, Understanding. Understanding the Lord. Understanding the Lord. There are many things that uh, will cause a problem in the heart of human being. But especially we are disturbed when we don't understand things. That's why we always study and study and study and study. We want to study more because we want to understand everything. Even scientists, they are eager to understand more and more. People want to understand why do we live on earth? People want to understand life. People want to understand the process, everything. And when people don't understand they are ready to invest as much as necessary to become clear about the things they want to know. So you will find that we invest millions and millions and millions in research. Why? To understand. Not only things that may look so great in the future, and even we want to understand the past. And scientists, they are investing a lot of money together with the institutions that are ready for it just to understand how the ancient people did the things they did. How did they build all the wonderful constructions, buildings, the things that make our hearts just to stay in awe. They want to understand. We always want to understand. And we are ready to invest. In this case, I'm speaking about something different. I'm speaking about understanding the Lord. And understanding the will of God. And understanding the purpose of God in our lives. And uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ came down... To bring us this wonderful salvation. To forgive our sins. To go to the cross. And uh, offer himself a ransom for us. To make himself a sacrifice. That we could receive life. It is always wonderful. But many times we people don't understand. There are still many things in life we don't understand. We are speaking about... Christian life. We are speaking about this spiritual life. We are speaking about the new life with Jesus and still many people we don't understand. Many things still there and we shake our heads and say, we scratch and say, what is this? There is always the importance of understanding. But let me tell you something. The day when you come to the point that you say, sorry, I cannot understand, remember that it, there is always an opportunity for you because you may believe God. You may trust Him even if you don't understand. Rely on Jesus. Lean on the Word of God. Trust your heavenly father, even if you don't understand. But the Lord will always be there, just making things clear before your eyes. And however, even though we are with the Lord, we'll, we'll, we'll face that situation. Many things will be kind of dark for many people. When I am here... Telling this is because the part of the scripture we read, we read just a few verses in the, math, in the book of Matthew chapter 9 
and we see the Lord Jesus Christ doing his work and many people around himself and they are still asking the same questions they didn't understand in the first case the Lord Jesus in verse 9 and so on the Lord Jesus saw Matthew he was sitting at the receipt of custom he was a customs collector he was working for the government Roman Empire he was in charge of collecting the money from the Jewish people in his place and give an account to the government and so on all these people they were considered I'm speaking about the publicans it means the ones who used to work in that type of work they were considered sinners they were considered the lowest of the Jewish society because they used to work for the Roman Empire and they were Jewish moreover tradition says that all these people made their living because they charge more that was was the, the the right thing they always used to overcharge people for instance someone had to pay 1000 they used to charge 2000 so 1000 for the government 1000 for the collector if it was 1 million then they used to charge 1 million and a half 1 million for the government half a million for the collector so it was considered criminals to be a tax collector in other words a publican it was considered a criminal by the Jewish people they knew about the habits of these people they knew them as thieves robbers although they were in a position before the government so the Lord Jesus saw a man called Matthew and he was sitting at the receipt of customs. It means he was working at the moment. He was collecting the taxes. And suddenly the Lord Jesus saw him collecting the taxes from people and the Lord said to him, follow me. Follow me. And he arose and followed Jesus. Let me tell you something. People can be in the lowest condition before society and however the Lord Jesus still will have mercy on them. Because nobody is more sinner than anybody else. Every sinner is a sinner. Regardless the type of sin people are committing, we were born in sin. And sinners are all sinners. The only way to escape the only way out of this condition is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is the Redeemer. In the book of John, Gospel of John, when John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ coming down by the river bank, then he pointed at Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That is our guarantee. That Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But these people, they were considered real sinners. You know that that is the situation. Even though all of the humankind is bound by sin. And the Lord says, we were all sinners. However, people will make distinction between one sinner and the other one according to the type of sin people commit but the worst sin let me tell you is not being a tax collector in the case of matthew the worst sin was not the adultery of the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery the worst sin is not the sin of that killer that came and killed somebody the worst sin that people may commit 
is the sin of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the love of God manifested. He is the love of God given for our redemption. He is the pure manifestation of God's love. There is no other way, even we are always short in words. We don't know how to explain. But the word of God will just give us that wide understanding. That the love of God is so deep, so high, so wide. So large. There are no words to describe the word of the Lord. And when human beings reject the word, the love of God represented in Jesus Christ, offering himself as a ransom from you and I, then that is the worst sin that people may commit. Because even if a killer comes and accepts Jesus, Jesus Christ will clean him from his sin. If a homosexual comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and give over his life, the Lord will forgive him. If a robber comes and give his life over to the Lord, the Lord will forgive him. If a drunkard comes and gives his life over to the Lord, the Lord will forgive him. But when you and I reject the only one who can forgive us, who is going to forgive us? Are you with me? If we reject the only one that can forgive us, then who can forgive us? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you with me? Understanding the Lord is not always easy. These people, they came and saw the Lord Jesus Christ and he was sitting at meat in the house. Whose house? Matthew's house. When Matthew came following Jesus, he arranged a wonderful food and so on and a lot of publicans and sinners came and they sat down to eat food together with Jesus. And the disciples of Jesus were there. And the publicans were there. The sinners were there. And the Lord Jesus was there. And when the Pharisees saw it, they came and they saw and they shook their head. And they said, no way. What is this Jesus doing there? Why is he eating together with publicans and sinners? Why is he just having fellowship with these people? And then the Lord Jesus, when he heard that, he said, They that be whole need not a physician. That's the truth. The ones who need the physicians are the ones who are sick. But people couldn't understand how the Lord could come and sit down with sinners. But remember, sinners came to look after Jesus and Jesus forgave them. Sometimes it is difficult for us to understand that there is always an opportunity for everybody. That the same way the Lord loved us, he loves the rest of mankind. The same way the Lord Jesus came to rescue ourselves, he has come to rescue anybody else. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love, his nature is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world. He loved sinners. He loved the lost ones. He loved you and I when we were not children of God. We were not friends of the Lord. 
we didn't love God. We rejected God at that time, and he loved us in our condition. When we were away from him, when we rejected the very idea of serving God, God loved us. The Lord Jesus loved us. But now we are saved. Now we are in Jesus. We now should love sinners outside there. They are not doing the right thing. That was our very condition. When we see sinners outside, we should see the picture of our lives before we came to the Lord. And we should melt down in our hearts, crying for them, Lord, have mercy on them. But the Pharisees, they couldn't understand. And the Lord Jesus said, go and learn what means I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The truth is that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the ones who were lost. If we don't understand it, if we don't see that, We'll come to the house of God, we'll go home, and we'll always enjoy ourselves, and we'll never think about the lost outside there. And the Lord is always thinking about them. Though you and I are in his house, though you and I are serving him, and he's glad with us. The Bible says that whenever a sinner, whenever a sinner come and give his life to the Lord, there is feast in heaven. Just for one sinner that comes to repentance. So we want to make the heart of the Lord glad. Let's understand the Lord. Amen. And just for me to go to the last part. Then the disciples of John came as well. And they said, why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But your disciples fast not. So there is always, you see, it was not only the Pharisees. Now we are speaking about the disciples of John. Different groups. Because when we read this, we think that it's just one group. The ones who don't understand Jesus. But when we study this carefully, we understand that it is always a problem in the mind, in the heart of human being. Why? Because sometimes it's hard to understand. What is hard to understand? The love of God. It's so easy and so hard. So easy because it is just to receive it but faith. So hard because we want to understand every single thing and sometimes our minds are so narrow. Amen. It's so simple. Just receive the love of God. Just be glad because of what the Lord has done. Just give thanks with a grateful heart. Just give thanks with a grateful heart. Just say thank you. But it's so hard sometimes. Why? But do you think it is the only group the Bible speak about another person? The Bible says there was this man who had two sons. The youngest one asked for the part that belonged to him according to the laws. His inheritance. He took the money. He went away. He spent all the money. He lived in a wrong way. He became hungry. He lost everything. And now he decided to come back to the house of his father. 
And when the father saw him afar off, the father ran to him. The father hugged the son. The father kissed the son. The father ordered his servants, put a new ring, put a new cloth on him. Put new shoes on him. And then he ordered something else. Call for the musicians. Called all my friends. This my son was dead. Now he's alive. He was lost. Now he's been found. Rejoice! Kill the fat calf. Rejoice. And everybody started singing and eating. And everything was just joy inside the house. And suddenly the eldest son was coming from the field. And when he came near, he heard the music. And so he asked the servant, what is going on? And they told him, your brother. He came back. So the man was angry. The eldest son didn't want to come in. And then the father came out to say, what happened? Why are you so angry? And he said, I've been with you my whole life. I've lived right for you. And you never gave me a single kid. To make a feast with my friends. And however this your son. Who threw away all your money. Who just lived in that wrong way. Came and now you have killed. The fat calf and everything. And you brought musicians. And, you are, and the father said my son. All that I have is yours. You don't have to be angry. Come on, your brother was lost. He's been found. He was dead, now he's alive. Let's make merry. He didn't want. Why? He couldn't understand the love of his father. You understand? He couldn't understand the love of his father. Because for him, it was unjust to do what the father was doing. And many things of God may look at injustice before your eyes. <laughs> the love of God is so great, so wide, so large, so deep. So high that sometimes we struggle trying to understand. And sometimes it is really impossible for us to understand. Why? They came and said, why? Why? It is the next group. Why do we fast? And even the Pharisees. Fast. And we fast often. It means every week we fast. But your disciples, they never fast. They expected the Lord to come and scold the disciples and say, fast. But the Lord Jesus said, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them. And then they shall fast. So they were kind of bitter because they were fasting. The Pharisees were fasting and Jesus' disciples were not fasting. In other words, make it so simple. What was the Lord saying? Be quiet. It's the time will come when they will fast. Someday they will fast. Somehow circumstances will change for them. And they will understand they have to fast. But now they don't see the need. Wait 
until they will come to fast. What is the Lord saying? If you are doing something for him, if you are doing it wholeheartedly, do it. It is your commitment to God. It is your decision to serve God faithfully. Serve him faithfully. Don't look at some other people. That is what happened many times in this life. Some Christians, they come and say, Pastor, why should I live right? Look, I know some other people from other churches. I, I know some other people from other places and they don't have to live like this. It is the same question. Why do we fast and even the Pharisees fast and your disciples don't fast? It is always that question mark. Why? If you are living for God, live for him gladly. If you want to live for the Lord, live for him gladly. Do your things with a grateful heart. If the Lord has given you the understanding that you must live in that right way for him, live in that right way for him and don't be bitter. Just serve God. Don't try to make an excuse because many times our questions is to make an excuse. We want to hide behind something. We want to hide behind an answer. Don't make an excuse. Are you living for God in a right way? Continue living for him in that righteous way. You know the Lord will be pleased with your attitude. Understanding the Lord. Do whatever you do for the glory of God. I say do whatever you do. For the glory of God. Live the way you live. For the glory of God. How many of you want to live for the glory of God? I want to live for the glory of God. Would you like to stand please?